Hey everyone, Tech Steve here, back with another comparison for you. So today, we're gonna to compare the Sony X77L, which is a great television if you're a Sony fan and you're looking to save some money. But how does it compare against the LG 9000, which is considered one of the top-end models if you don't wanna go into the mini LED or OLED technology. Well, in this video, I'm gonna compare everything that you need to know about these two televisions, and at the end of it, we'll come up to the conclusion which one is the best one for you. So let's get right into it. First, let's take a quick look at the UR9000 from LG. This is an IPS panel, but it could vary on which size that you buy. They did change the design, so now it has edge lit technology for the backlights instead of direct lit, but it allows the TV to be much thinner. The UR9000 still uses a metal back on it, which is great that LG kept that quality control up, has some plastic feet on it, and there's an LG logo on the bottom. This TV also comes with the Magic Remote Control. On the back of this TV, you'll find two USBs that you can play your media off of if you need to or connect peripherals like keyboards and mouse. Plus it has three HDMI 2.0s for 60 Hertz gaming and TV watching. It has an ATSC TV tuner and there's a LAN connection on the back and it has a fiber optic for hooking up to some of the traditional audio systems from the past. Or as I can see, this TV does not support Dolby Vision, which introduced billions of colors to the television, but I will tell you it has a stunning picture. But on the other hand, it does support HDR10 and what LG calls HR10 Pro, which use artificial intelligence to take the signal, clean it up to give you the best viewing capabilities. The software in the LG is powered by WebOS, which has tons of benefits. First of all, it is made and branded by LG, so it has more control of all the different inputs or if you plug in a gaming console or a Blu-ray player, it knows what it is and it adjusts itself automatically. It also has advanced features like sports alerts, health, as well as advanced menu system that allows you to adjust just about anything that you can desire in the picture settings. In my opinion, I think WebOS is very easy to use. It's very intuitive. You have a dashboard where you can see everything connected to the television. You can also do what they call Internet of Things. So if you have LG peripherals or if you have huge light bulbs in your house, you can control all that from the television. It also has different hubs. Like for example, if you're a gamer, you can press on the gaming hub and everything that has to be gaming is right there. Or if you're the type of person who listens to music all the time, you can have your Pandora or Spotify, everything inside of that hub. The only downsides of the LG software, in my opinion, that some people will probably agree upon is that LG has ads built into it. So whenever you go to the home screen, you will see these rotating ads. And unfortunately, there's no way to turn that off. So this is the Sony X77L, which is a great television. Sony doesn't really go into that category of giving you a lot of bells and whistles. They stick to their traditional values of building quality products with fantastic screen quality. This TV has advanced features such as X Reality Pro and the Trilumius Pro display that gives you unparalleled picture quality. This TV does use direct backlights and it doesn't support Dolby Vision, but it does support HDR10 and HLG picture profiles. Now, in my opinion, this TV is a little bit boxier because of the direct backlights makes it a little bit thicker and it has plastic feet that snaps into the bottom of it. So no tools are required. There's a Sony logo in the center of the TV and it has more of a traditional remote control that doesn't give you the number pad, but it still has some of the basic features so you can easily get through some of your basic applications. As far as connectivity, you have two USBs. There's a fiber optic on the back of it. And with an adapter, you can hook up your older peripherals like DVD players. It also has three HDMI's that runs at 60 Hertz. And you'll find a ethernet connection as well as an ATSC tuner for watching over the air content. I want to show you guys something real quick. This is a Sony remote and this is a LG remote. Some people think this is big and bulky. This is nice and slim, but the LG does have some benefits where you can program this for different devices where the Sony on the other hand has to rely on what they call HDMI CEC product. So if you plug in a Blu-ray player and it supports it, you can control it with this remote control. But if you have an old cable box or something like that, in a lot of cases, you can take the LG, put in a programming code and make it match up with that cable box. Now the Sony does run off of what they call Google TV. Google TV is becoming a standard in the industry from cell phones as well as TVs because some of the benefits of it is that you have built-in Chromecast, you have the screen savers, you can add your photos to your Google account and play them on the TV. The operating system has a huge library of applications. And the reason it has more application is because developers are seeing that Google TV is becoming a standard, so they support it more. And just in case you didn't know this, 
You also have the Google TV app that anyone can download, just need a Gmail account. And this is allow you to see and experience what Google TV is all about. There's even a device here that shows all your Google TV products in your home and you can cast from this application right over to the TV. And that's something that you can't do with LG as far as having access to something like this. Now let's talk about the picture quality of these TVs because all these features are great, but how good do they look when these TVs are side by side? Looking at these TVs side by side in cinema mode, in my opinion, it is very hard to say which TV looks the best. Only thing I could say is that the Sony slightly edges out the LG, and I mean slightly, just because I can notice that the contrast is a little bit more black, where the LG is a little bit more on the purple side, and the colors on the Sony pops just a little bit more than the LG. But overall, I think both TVs will deliver a great experience for your average consumer. And then when I switched over to Disney Plus to watch a few movies with these televisions, I really think the Sony had a little bit better natural skin tones on it. And for this test, I want to show you the difference in those black levels that I was referring to. I can see on the Sony that the car had just a little bit more contrast. And one thing I did notice on the LG, I could see the backlights a lot more because it uses edge lit backlights, which has all the lights around the edge of the television. The Sony on the other hand uses direct backlights where they're on the back panel. So the chances of seeing all the edges or light bleed is minimized because of the technology. Now, when it comes to gaming, Sony does not have a gaming menu, but it does have auto low latency and it does have HDR tone mapping for the PS5. If you go to LG, you do get a full on-screen menu where you can go in and control all the functionality of your gaming, see the frame rates and more, and that's a pretty great feature to have. If you're a gamer, besides the on-screen controls that the LG has, I really felt the experience was pretty equal. Overall, I think both TVs are going to respond the same as far as input lag. I think both TVs are going to have similar colors. So either way you go, if you like the on-screen menus, you definitely want to go to LG. But if you want to get the same experience and the overall picture quality, I definitely think you should choose the Sony. Now, both of these panels that I have are IPS panels. And when I was doing some viewing angles, you can see the backlight, but they do perform well, especially if you're gonna put these TVs up high at the top of a fireplace, even mounted up high in a sports bar. And I did some research at displayspecifications.com and there's just not a lot of information on the panel type. But if you know, leave a comment below because I'd like to know what type of panels these have with your research. In my opinion, either TV you go with, I think if you're on a budget, it's gonna be a great television just because they have really good colors, they support HDR, and both of these TVs are IPS panels, so you're gonna get those great displays. But if I was really having to rank these TV side by side, I'm gonna give the LG a seven, and I'm gonna give the Sony a eight. And here's the reason. I do like the fact that the LG does have the gaming menu. I like the operating system, but you do get those pesky ads from time to time. And I do like the remote control because it has a lot of functionality. On the other hand, when it comes down to just picture quality, that's where the Sony works for me. I just feel like they do a better job with the gradients and it has better colors. And I like the fact that it uses direct backlights that's gonna give you a much smoother black levels. So that's my rankings. If you have a different opinion, be sure to leave a comment below. I'm Tech Steve. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.